the struggle to overcome intolerance, the campaign to protect our environment, the plight of the homeless. Hi, I'm Corey Coffin, and welcome to Community Voices, where student filmmakers take on untold stories. The following documentaries are from the Dodge College of Film and Media Arts at Chapman University in Orange, California. In the Community Voices program, students partner with local nonprofit organizations to create stories about compelling social issues. Community Voices will take you on a journey as we give a voice to those who might otherwise remain unheard. Homelessness is all around us. It might surprise you to learn that there are over 35,000 homeless in one of the country's most affluent areas, Orange County, California. Even more shocking is the fact that a large portion of the homeless are teenagers. In Upstanding Youth, we take a look at the lives of teens on the streets. It's not like a choice that I made to leave the house. I actually got kicked out. She told me to leave her house. She didn't want to see me again because I reminded her of my father. I was just like so terrified that my dad was just gonna like beat the out of me. I just I didn't go home again. I didn't go home again. Okay, clean up the table. Excuse me. Hello? Come on, clean it up. Oh, you just Hello? Sorry. No, she's not Do you have the, uh... The dimes? Yeah. Rachel, I gotta go. I'm gonna No, don't throw them. I wanted to drink them. Oh, well, then drink them. They're still good. So the services that Stand Up For Kids offers are life coaching, legal assistance, food and shelter, educational, and social. We just help the kids to get back on their feet and become self-sufficient so that they're being productive and can take care of themselves. We all work remotely, and when we meet our kids, we meet them in a public place. They don't know us when they first meet us, so <clears throat> it's easy to go to a food court and sit down and buy a coffee and just start talking to them. Again. How about we switch it? You guys go this way this time and I'll go that way. Stand Up For Kids reaches kids by going out into the street and meeting them where they're at. So anywhere where you see teenagers hang out on a Friday night, you'll see us. Usually the kids are the best referrals. They know somebody that's kicked out sleeping on somebody's couch or having a hard time. We work with youth between the age of 12 and 21 and build relationships with them and encourage them to want something more for their life. Living on the streets was hard. Everything was cool during the day. But once the sun went down, I was like, that's when I had to start thinking, like, I need to find a place to sleep. Sometimes I would have to go as far as, like, you know, sneaking into one of my friend's garages without even telling them, just like, so I could stay warm. There were a lot of cases where, yeah, I had to sleep in a park or I had to sleep, like, under the freeway, completely trapped with myself, thinking about all the that's going on in my life. And 
I, it would always end up leading back to how my mom died. And a lot of times I would sit there and honestly like just like cry in a park, just like by myself, freezing my ass off, like crying. I just felt like I, I couldn't stand it. We're in uh, Huntington Beach, a spot called Hidden Valley. For a while, actually, I was staying here, and it was mostly like a place where uh, homeless punk squatter kids come and chill and kick back because they don't have places to go. This water never used to be here. Over there is where we used to have like beds and tents. And then during the day, we'd hang out at that tree and drink and stuff, watch out for cops. Down here, this, is our, this was our pathway. There used to be a lot of uh, tumbleweed right here. Then we would go right here, jump over the log, go under that log and make a left and then where that tree is, we used to sleep behind it. I started using speed and cocaine and drinking and I was just going like in a downward spiral like really fast. And I went to a, a buddy's house they ended up having a party and I got really wasted and really high and I ended up going out and stealing a car and I went to jail for nine months and um, I was the only one to blame, you know? I was the one that decided to go on that path. Hey, Kent, they're all over the place. More doodles? Yeah, it's my sign. Yeah, I'm going to It's done? Yep. I only have to see my PO for like two or three hours. I'll be but home I'll be back. tomorrow. Well, because I need you I'm not miraculously going to find a place to stay other than here. Yeah. 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 We just help the kids to get back on their feet and become self-sufficient, so whatever that is, so that they're being productive and can take care of themselves. Oh, you guys have black socks, thank God. He's pretty consistent. He does everything that, that I recommend. Um, I give him advice on what I may do and let him make his own decisions, and I just pray that he does the right thing. And for the most part, he does pretty good. Um, there have been a few times that he didn't make a decision that I would have made, but then I told him, I'm not gonna save you. So you're gonna have to live those consequences, whatever they are. All right, let's roll. Okay. Are you sagging your pants? Oh, I, th I thought you were. I was like, what is, what is this guy doing? It's 2010, bro. It's 09. It's 2010. <laughs> Ready to do this? Look at that hair, dude. Where's Paul Mitchell when you need him? Uh -huh. <laughs> hair model. Eric Saldivar. Yes, yeah, sir. How you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? Doing well, thanks. So, uh, Eric, why don't you tell me a little about yourself? My name's Eric. I was born in Orange County, you know, raised in Westminster. In jail, I was just realizing of what I was doing with myself and where I would keep on going if I chose that path. So I decided that I wanted to get help. So I entered a rehabilitation program and I did that for six months. I decided that I wanted some time away from my sister's house, so I went to my, my best friend's house 
and he introduced me to stand-up for kids. So why don't you tell me about some of your skills and qualifications? I have good communication skills. I can work well under pressure. Another thing? Sorry. Eye contact. Remember, that's one of the things. You don't want to be like, just looking for a place to hang out, make some cash, you know? <laughs> so. I've worked with flowers and floral arrangements. I don't really like asking for help because I've had to do everything myself. But when I ask for help, I would rather have someone help me because they want to. And that's what the people at Santa for Kids are like out here. They're just really happy, outgoing people that you could get along with no matter who you are. They're always there for me, you know, they always ask how I'm doing and I used to, I used to think that, that the world didn't give a shit about anyone but themselves and they just changed my way of thinking of people that, that actually care. And what I, I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to better myself and they're helping me. That's it dude, we're going to get you a job now. I'm going to get myself a job. There you go. With the help of you guys. It's all you, man. Yeah. We can uh, point you in the right direction, help you out as much as you can, but in the end, it comes down to you. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, of course. With everything. I, com I, I knew that a long time ago. Yeah. You know? How about you? Do you have a job or anything? I'm trying to get a job in sales. I have, like, an interview tomorrow. Oh, okay, where's your interview? I don't know. They won't tell me. I've never even had an interview before, so I don't know what to expect, really. But uh, they said that I, I would I would do well, so hopefully I do. This is my first job, and I'm gonna be working five days a week. It's kind of it kind of sounds exhausting, but money's money. The best part about my job is actually working with the kids. My favorite times is when I see them smile and when they're acting like kids. They're not worried about who's looking at them or where they're gonna sleep and. They're just happy. Those are the times that, that make me especially happy when I can see them smile. I feel kind of relieved coming back and knowing that I don't have to stay here anymore. It's a beautiful place, but it's not something I want to do again. I don't want to live here. You know, I'm, I'm over that. The way I want people to see me is for who I am, you know, a caring person, someone that cares about myself, someone that won't judge me for what I did, but who I'm trying to be now. I want to be a family man, you know, I want to be something that my parents and my family didn't do for me, you know, so I'm working on it, but it's hard, you know, from where I came from to where I'm going, but I know I can do it. I think I'd actually like to volunteer for Stand Up For Kids. It's just something that, that I feel that, that I could help other people from where I've been. Nearly 50 million people go hungry on any given day. Second Harvest Food Bank fights to change that statistic. In Food for Thought, meet the people for whom having enough to eat is not a given, but a daily struggle.
The carefree California way of life. Breathtaking beaches, multi-million dollar real estate, the perfect place to raise a family. Many Orange County residents rarely question the privileged lifestyle that surrounds us. And yet, in Orange County, nearly one in five residents lives below the poverty line. Beneath the sun-kissed skin and the desperate housewives are the grumbles of empty stomachs. These people aren't concerned about their next tennis match or making their next Manny Petty appointment. Instead, they worry when or if they'll be having their next meal. Our American culture drives us to always want more. Bigger portions, all you can eat. But producing more food produces more waste, and wasted food is wasted energy. One third of American food goes straight to dumpsters. That's a third less food that can feed the hungry. Food banks like Second Harvest aim to put that food to use. Welcome to Second Harvest Food Bank. My name is Kelly McGregor. I'm the Director of Development. We are a pass-through distribution center. The 120,000 square foot facility, essentially three warehouses that stores and distributes a lot of food. Volunteers are the heart and soul of our organization. They provide numerous hours of service, but most of the work happens in the next room. These are all the items that have come through our food drives that need to be sorted by category. We have our volunteers go through and put them into boxes once they've been checked for their safety. But first, the items have to get to us. Our truck drivers pick up from grocery stores every day and bring items back to the warehouse or directly to the agencies we're going to feed people today. I came here looking for a job and once I got here, wow, and I wanted to be a part of that. It's just a win-win situation. Why not have us there when you pull it to take it away? You don't have to throw it off. You put it to some great use. I mean, feeding human beings. You don't look at a person and can tell if they're hungry or not, or if they're going to have enough food to, to get through the end of the week. There's just no way of you ever knowing. retired, I decided I wanted to pay back because I never had a chance to volunteer. And about the time we were ready to volunteer, we found that they were looking for volunteers for Second Harvest. We're uh, checking for uh, dates that they're within uh, the criteria. Uh, these kind of packages here normally don't have a date on it, so we look to see if they're intact, if they're not ripped. If they are, then we have to throw them out because we don't know if they've been contaminated. We love being a part of it. You know, here we've been here like 19 years, and we actually look forward to Tuesday morning, and we plan our schedule. If it's going to interfere going down there on Tuesday morning, then we'll just eliminate what we want to do. John and Mary take their appetite for helping others out to their community. Every Tuesday after they're done sorting at the warehouse, the couple delivers second harvest food to their church. 
Lately, there's been a shortage of food. Rosaleo, okay, the, you know, we're only getting 10 cases of cereal. Well, that's the limit. Three cases, we didn't have that many to give them. They had to cut it back to 10. They limited everybody to 10 cases. Here's for the 10 cases today. Okay. Well, <laughs> take what we get. It all traces back to rising petroleum prices. Higher production costs have farmers selling food to supermarkets at higher prices. In turn, markets are buying less food and selling it for lower prices. More people are choosing the grocery store instead of dining out, leaving less surplus food to feed the hungry. Not too much cereal today, but we take what we get. What we help are the people in the community, so we don't care if they're, if they're Catholics or whatever. It's that they need help, and we're there to help. That's our mission. I think everybody deserves to eat every day. Our responsibility, uh, each of us, everyone, should be somehow concerned about that. And if we can do anything about it, to do something about it. Grandma's House of Hope is doing just that. The Second Harvest Agency provides shelter and aid to older women who have lost their jobs, homes, and families. I had a career as a purchasing manager, and I owned a store in Laguna Beach called Little Bit of Italy and a bit more. But due to a divorce, um, uh, my husband was overwhelmed with the fact that I was um, ill and uh, could not produce an equal amount of money. Uh, we closed the store and divorced. So um, I worked after that, but I found that as an older person with disabilities, most people didn't want you. Judy's story is becoming all too familiar. The unemployment rate has hit record highs in the past few years. Orange County's unemployment rate alone is at 9.6%, higher than the nationwide at 9%. It was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. Went from 190 to 166 in the blink of an eye. We, we haven't seen anything like this probably since the Great Depression, I think it's fair to say. This could be the most serious recession in decades. And that means life, as most Americans know it, is about to change, in some cases dramatically. I went over a month before I came here. Um, I just didn't feel like eating or even talking to anyone about it. I stayed shut up in my house, so I didn't go to the store. But when I came here, the first thing they did was offer me food. And I was able to go to the truck that came from Second Harvest and take the food. the second harvest has given us. You don't lose your faith. That's the one thing that I've been able to recapture more of is my faith in God and knowing that there's a purpose here because there's other people that are good like me when I thought I wasn't. Hunger knows no demographic. It hides in the lives of children, the working poor, and especially senior citizens. Do you like it like this? Yeah. 
Donating a single dollar to any food bank can help someone like Judy enjoy at least three meals a day. Second Harvest welcomes those who would like to donate their time, like John and Mary. With a little effort, members of the community can help Second Harvest reduce hunger in Orange County. The Community Voices documentaries are made possible by the Daunt Family Foundation. Funding for this program is provided by Chapman University.